What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A73 5G. So stay tuned if you want to get the most of all the various cameras on your device. Now the first thing I want to do is give you a tour of everything we actually have here as far as the cameras go. So there is a quad camera setup on the back of the device, and we have a 108 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at up to 123 degrees, a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 5 megapixel macro camera for close up images. And then the front facing camera is 32 megapixels. So we do have portrait mode for the front and rear cameras, and in addition to that, this phone does support 4K video recording for the front and rear cameras as well. So overall, even though this is a mid-range device and not nearly as high-end as what Samsung offers with their S-series phones, like the S22 Ultra, for example, we're still getting a variety of different camera features with this phone, giving you really a lot of options. Now, if you're looking for a quick and easy way to access the camera app at all times, all you have to do is double press on the power button. And just like that, it pulls up the camera right away. And it doesn't matter where you are throughout the operating system, you can do that. And even with the display off, if you double press on the power button, it does indeed pull up the camera app right away. Now this feature is called Side Key, and you can actually customize that to pull up any app of your choosing. And you could even use it to pull up a different camera app if you don't want to use the default camera app. But to find this, you're going to go to the settings, go to search, type in Side, and you'll see it there, Side Key under Advanced Features, then go there. And you can indeed see here that we do have quick launch camera enabled if you double press on that button. And then again, if you go here, you can go to the gear icon to pick any app of your choosing to do this instead. So really awesome that we have a quick and easy way to get to the camera, no matter where you are throughout the operating system. Now heading over to the camera app here, this is with the main camera right now under 1X. Then from there, you can switch over to the ultra wide angle camera at 0.5, so you can fit a lot more content into the frame. I'm definitely a big fan of having an ultra wide angle camera as it is a nice way to kind of change up the types of photos that you're taking. And of course, you can use it with video as well. Now then from here, we can head over to the more tab. And then once we're there, there's the macro camera. So with the macro camera, you can get very close up and have things be in really good detail. So definitely a pretty cool feature as well. And then we've got portrait mode. So we can get those nice blurred out backgrounds that I know that everybody's a big fan of. And then we can also switch around to the front facing camera to take portrait selfies too. And there's also a group selfie option that kind of crops out things a little bit. And of course you can do all of this with the front facing camera as well outside of portrait mode. Now if you're looking for a quick and easy way to take selfies with this device, there is a feature called palm selfie. So if you just hold your palm in front of the front facing camera, it will take a selfie photo. So let's try that out right now. There we go. And it just took the photo. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So very easy there, and that is already enabled by default. Now we have a lot of different options up top here. We have the settings in the upper left. We also have the flash as well. So you can toggle that. You can do automatic or off or just on at all times. You can go here for the timer. So there's two seconds, five seconds, and 10 seconds. You can also head over to this option here to adjust the aspect ratio of the photos. So you can do three by four, nine by 16, which is also 16 by nine if you do it this way. That's great for thumbnails. There's one by one, so you can take square photos. And we also have full, which is the entire size of the display. Now another option up here is three by four and the full 108 megapixels. Now despite this phone having a 108 megapixel main camera, by default, you're actually not taking photos at the full 108 megapixels. And the reason for that is because it would fill up the storage on your phone pretty quickly. So if you do go up here, you can switch it over to that so that you are able to take photos in that full megapixel count. So after doing that, you can really zoom in here and things are in very good detail, especially for a mid-range device like this one. But most importantly, I don't want you to get this phone and take a bunch of pictures and assume that they're all taken in 108 megapixels, considering that they're not, you know, in the default setting here. We also have this option up here called Motion Photo. That's very similar to Apple's Live Photo. So if you enable that, you can then take a photo and it will record almost like a short video for a second there. Now it doesn't really work very well in this situation since nothing is moving at all but essentially you'll take that motion photo just like how you would on an iPhone, for example, with live photo. So that is not enabled by default just because that does take up quite a bit more space on the device. 
but if you do wanna use it, then it is right up there. We also have this option in the upper right corner and it gives you some different filters. So we have a lot of different overlays and filters here to choose from. There's also my filters and you can also add some face filters as well. So definitely a lot of options here to play around with involving filters. Now for me at least, I just prefer to not use any filters at all, just go with original, but you can definitely kind of try some different things if you want to. Now you probably noticed already down here, we have kind of the slider where you can find different options involving taking photos and videos, and you can actually customize this if you want to. So go to the more tab and you'll see this plus button right here. Then from here, you can move around the different modes. So you can't remove photo or video, but you can remove fun mode or portrait mode, but you can also add in different ones as well. So let's say you want to put macro mode down here. You just drop it right in, go to save. It's now not in this section, but you can now find it in this slider down below here. So a really cool customization there. Definitely a big fan of that because there might be certain camera features that you're using more or less. Now also in this section are a variety of different modes. Now I'm not going to go through all those in this video, but there's pro mode, there's pro video, single take, night mode, food mode, panorama, super slow-mo, slow motion, hyperlapse, and then of course the macro camera. So definitely a lot of different cool options here to try out. So again, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, despite this being a mid-range device, there are definitely a lot of different things here. So definitely as far as the features go, you are pretty set and good to go here. But also in the upper left corner is the full settings menu. So there's quite a bit here as well. So I'll show you the ones that I think are the most relevant. You can see here under pictures, you can swipe the shutter button to take a burst shot. So let's try that. And there we go. Just took a bunch of photos in the burst mode. So that's pretty awesome. You can also change this to create a GIF or GIF instead. So we'll do the same thing, but this time it's creating a GIF or GIF image. We can then go over to the photo gallery and you can see there it is right there. It's definitely very convenient if you wanna create an image like that. We also have this option for high efficiency pictures. So if you find yourself using up quite a bit of the space on your device and you don't want your photos to take up quite as much room, this of course only applies to future photos that you take but in this format, it's not quite as compatible with every website or app, but it will use up quite a bit less space. We have the same option here for video as well to reduce the file size. And then going further down here, auto HDR, I would definitely enable that if it's not enabled already. We also have grid lines. So with grid lines enabled, we now have the rule of thirds implemented into the viewfinder here. So that might help you with taking some better looking photos. So something worth trying out as well. We also have location tags if you wanna do that too. Going here to shooting methods, there's quite a few options here. So I already showed you Palm Selfie, and then up here, you can use the volume keys to take a photo or video. Now the other option here is zoom in or out, but let me show you first how it is by default. So if you use the volume key, doing volume up, or volume down, that essentially serves as a shutter button. So definitely very convenient. But again, if you go back to this area and you change that to zoom in or out, you can use the volume up to zoom in and the volume down to zoom out. And if you zoom out all the way, it will actually take you over to the ultra wide angle camera. Now, if you don't want either of those and you just want the volume buttons to act as a system volume control button, as it usually does, you can do that too. There's also voice commands, so you can use a voice command to record a video or to take a photo. So let me try that out right now. Smile. There we go, it took the photo, so that's pretty awesome. Let's see, what else do we have here? Going back to shooting methods. We also have floating shutter button. So with the floating shutter button, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's almost like a duplicate of the shutter button right here, and it just floats around. So if you wanna put it right there, you can do that. You can put it pretty much anywhere you want. So that could be convenient potentially. And then another option here is called settings to keep. So if you find yourself changing different filters or changing the camera modes, for example, or even the selfie angle, and you want things to kind of just stay that way every time you pull up the camera app, then you can enable these various settings to keep. So I definitely recommend kind of checking this out, learning more about these and seeing if you really want to enable any of these at all, because that could make things a bit easier. And then the last thing here is called the watermark. So with this, it'll add a watermark in the corner of your photo. This probably isn't something that most people will use, but for me at least, with reviewing all these different phones, it really does come in handy because I now know when I take a photo which phone took that picture, so I won't accidentally get different photos mixed up. So you can even add in your name too. So let's see, by Kevin. 
Breeze. Oh, whoop, can't write my whole name there. So just do Kevin B. There we go. So that's done. And then now with that enabled, I'll take a picture. Okay. And you now see in the corner here, it says that I did indeed take that picture and it says which phone took the picture. So kind of an interesting feature there. Again, not really something that I think everybody will end up using or even need, but if you do find yourself wanting a watermark of some sort on your photos, then there you go. But this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A73 5G. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. And also make sure to check out all my other videos on the channel about this device, as I already have quite a few up and I plan on uploading even more. So again, thanks for watching. This is Kevin, and I'll see you in the next video.